Good morning. My name is Katherine Eagle Williams and I am a member of the three affiliated tribes. I'm also a survivor of suicide, um, a mother of a young, beautiful daughter who completed suicide in September of 2011. I'm very honored to be here and to speak. This is only my third time ever speaking out publicly about what we have gone through as a family, as a tribe, as a community. Um, as Allison presented early on, these are the crude suicide death rates in the United States. And we also have the comparison to North Dakota. And as you can see, North Dakota is on an upward trend. These are, in red, is the state uh, suicide uh, occurrence number. And when you look at the blue, this is in the Native American population. Little did I know that when I came home, I actually lived and reside and I worked in the state of Arizona in the area of public health and research. I wrote grants for suicide. I knew the signs and symptoms. I knew the risk factors. Never ever in anyone's thoughts would I ever have thought I would be going through something uh, like suicide. Um, I, knew the, I knew these numbers, I knew the statistics, but I didn't realize that how it would impact me. When I speak about my daughter, I, I think about the fact that she's not just a statistic. In Indian country, we have a difficult time getting the information um, we don't know the true accurate numbers regarding suicide attempts and completions. They're often mixed into um, car accidents possibly, drug overdoses, alcohol uh, intoxication and aspiration and um, we don't know the numbers. At, on the three affiliated tribes we have five clinics. We do not have an ER. We don't know the true numbers. Often we find out about an attempt three months after when we receive a claim for payment for services for an ambulance. Um, we are working very hard, and I'm going to save some of that information for when Dr. Taylor Desire presents, who is our chief medical officer. So we're not seeing these things, but I have to say that two weeks before my daughter left us, I took her to the ER. She was having what I thought was palpitations from uh, her birth when she had a murmur. She had a murmur and I thought, well, what's going on? She would talk about this. I feel like I'm out on the basketball court and there's a thousand people watching me. And that two weeks prior, she was having those chest pains and I actually felt her palpitations and I was like, well, what were you doing? And as a, I'm trained as a physician. So I was doing all the physiological things, asking her, well, when does this happen? And I was doing all this stuff. I took her to the school. I took her to the school counselor. I was like, something's not right, but I can't put my finger on it, and neither can she. She was highly achieving. She was a link leader. She was a senior in high school, had everything going for her. I mean, look at her. She wanted to be a nurse. She comes from a medical family of nurses and, uh, and myself as a, as a trained in medicine. She was absolutely beautiful. Every time she walked down the stairs of our home in Tucson, I looked at her and I thought, man, that's my daughter. You're so beautiful. And I conveyed that those thoughts to my children, and I did my best to build up their self-esteem. But as I, as I move forward, I'll show you that some of these things aren't what they seem to be. I, I was married previously to a very abusive husband. Um, so my children, unfortunately, at the young age of two and five, experienced, witnessed abuse in our home, very violent acts of abuse. She herself, which it led me to my divorce, experienced abuse as a two-year-old. She, I often felt that she saved my life. Had she, had that not happened, I probably would still be in that relationship. She lost her dad at the age of eight. I was divorced at the, at, when she was two. Her dad died. She developed I'm sure now when I think back, we all have a little bit of PTSD as a result of that abuse. She developed anxiety is what I'm thinking after the fact, right? And there's also a family history, which I didn't even realize because we, are st we stigmatize suicide, depression as a sign of weakness. And I think, and it sounds really awkward for those who maybe have not experienced 
but the strength it must have took for her to complete because all she wanted to do was end her pain. That thought that like, we loved each other, we held hands. She was like my best little buddy and I honestly looked at her in just such awe at what beauty she carried with her, the person that she was that I wished I could have been. So when we talk about um, adverse childhood experiences, the, the ACE study, um, we look at the ACE scores and my score is a, is a five. And I can say just in looking and doing the 10 questions on behalf of my daughter retrospectively, and I can only say that she is at least a four. Other than that, I, I, there was other things that may have happened in her life, but I know for a fact that she was at least a four. So as the A scores increase, so does the risk of suicide. We look at the... Um, life expectancy and early death as a result of some of the adverse childhood experiences and risk factors which everybody has already talked about. And, and it's just amazing how this kind of falls into place and I feel like Creator does this for us and helps us um, to build into everything that we do in our life experiences. This is a picture of my daughter and I. We were in Denver, we were exchanging kids. Um, as, as an Indian family, we're very um, connected with our parents, grandparents, and we, we were going, we were exchanging kids, I guess. So we were in um, Denver. It was the very last time my oldest daughter was with my, my youngest daughter. And she told me, hey, mom, let's hold hands. And I didn't even know she took this picture until after she died. And we went through her iPod. And I thought to myself, who is going to hold my hand when we're in the movies? Who is going to hold my Because she held my hand all the time. We were so connected. So we went through, you know, as a family, we've gone through major grief and loss, as the previous speaker talked about. And I, again, this is just little snippets. The picture on the would be your right hand side with the guy from Hawaii. <laughs> I mean, who stops a parade <laughs> and gets the people to stop and take a picture? This was a parade that lasts like two and a half hours. She jumps out there, and this is literally three, three days before she left us. She was smiling. There were no signs. I didn't see any signs or symptoms. She was happy. She was a parade stopper. She was so beautiful to us and our family. And she left behind her brother and her sister. Um, when, when, as um, the previous speaker spoke about some of the cycles of loss, I experienced all those things and I really, it took, took a lot for me to not cry. Um, I am six years out of losing my daughter and just as she said, it's just beneath the surface of happiness. Fortunately, I've been able to find my happiness, but it's just right there, and I could be back in a second, literally, and I have to condition myself not to do that. But it was all of those things she talked about. It was the disbelief, the shock, intellectualizing, well, geez, this and that. You know, and I remember just being in shock and then not remembering for years having the guilt, what it, I was her mother, I should have known. Um, just, I felt helpless and suicidal. I thought, how can I live without my child? I want it to die. I, it, I felt like I was forcing myself to breathe. Um, it, was, it was horrible. Um, some of the things that I've learned, and it's funny because I, I brought one of my very awesome co-workers and friends, Melissa, who I always tell her, like, she, I, I wear rose-colored colored glasses, and I actually have a pink pair, and dang it, I didn't wear, bring them today. But I wear, I, she says, you are so rose-colored glasses, because that's the only way I can survive, is to be optimistic, to find hope, and, because if I, I could be right there, you know, and, and considering, contemplating, you know, my life. So when my daughter died, um, at that time I worked for the University of Arizona. I worked for Johns Hopkins University. I'd done a lot of consultant work, UCLA. I did research. I was in the behavioral health field. And 
I focused my life on my career and I felt so much guilt because I felt like, well, did I miss something? And I talked with her every night. We ate dinner every night. I went to every single basketball game she had. No matter where it was, I found myself there, even if it was minutes before the game started. You know, I, I, and as I'm moving forward, I'm realizing I have to be more connected with my child, my, ch my son who's now 15, and my older daughter. I have to have a social support. I was all about the job prior, and I still have tendencies. <laughs> Con um, having um, our children need to have con feel connected with other non-parental adults, having closeness of friends, caring friends, feeling safe in their school, having a safe neighborhood, and having high academic or academic achievement, and making sure there's awareness and access. When I moved back to the Three Affiliated Tribes, which is my home, which is where I felt I needed to be to heal, I, I, I didn't realize how many families, my own relatives, had suffered from the loss of suicide. We had four clinics that were outside of our um, main primary clinic that ha weren't in operation. We had like one day out of the week. We had no access. And again, I'm gonna let Dr. Taylor elaborate on some of the activities that we're doing because this has become a um, passion for us to help our people. And now we finally have access, but I have to say that some of the things that really helped me that cost minimal money is our traditional ways. I came home and I was able to realize the continuum of life as seen from the perspective of a Native woman and how that spirituality um, really does impact. That isn't a reimbursable service that we can't pay for, put a number on it, but this is a beautiful picture that one of my brother cousins took of a ceremony that um, my son was in there and he prayed you know and to teach that prayer and that's something that again isn't reimbursable but it's something that impacts our spirit and our soul and lets us know that things are going to be okay and that that life is a continuum and that although I mean I actually feel like my daughter's here with me she helps me through my days um, and I have faith that, you know, she's, she's okay and that we will all meet again. And I didn't have that faith prior. And oftentimes we believe as Native people that we come here, we have a journey, it's predestined, and we're here to teach one another and to learn from life experiences because really we're spiritual beings. So some of the things that we have considered and I think is already happening. We've recently had a event that was planned by grassroots individuals to um, call the Sacred Fire. And I think I'm seeing this kind of happening throughout Indian country where we light a fire. I mean, there's more to it. I'm gonna simplify it, but there, where there's a fire that's lit and that's that burning desire to live a good life, to be healthy, to address all the social issues that we face as Indian people, which are many that come from our historical trauma, that come from our current trauma that we experience every day because we are such a tight, um, close-knit people that um, when, when something happens to one person, one family, it affects all of us. So I see our people moving that way. I see that we're trying to our best to incorporate our traditional values of living and and lifestyle. This is just one of the, um, this is the prayer group that I belong to and that I'm so grateful that my son is learning this. He's learning ways to pray. He is modeling positive behaviors and has an outlet and knows that it's going to be okay. It doesn't mean that for me, like my PTSD is so bad and I kind of laugh about it and he gets annoyed with me, but I'm constantly checking on him. Are you okay? Are you okay? You know, and any sense that I feel like he's feeling down, which is a normal happy, I mean, a, a normal behavior that sometimes we get sad. I'm just right there and he gets annoyed with me, but 
So um, these are just some of our some pictures that a friend shared with me that she said, why don't you put this in your presentation? And it's just some of the, like signifies some of what we do to help ourselves. And sometimes I feel sad because some of our people don't realize that that's available and that's something that can help us through our grief and our loss. And, and I really wanna just, I wish I could just invite everybody to experience what I've experienced and um, as far as my healing process and what's making me a better person. Um, so I'm not sure, uh, I don't think I have anything else to say. I just wanna say that our children are not just a statistic. They are loved, they are part of our families, community, society. Um, I think my grandfather used to say, you know, our life experience is our, becomes our teaching. And although I don't speak out publicly a lot about my daughter, I, I, um, I do understand the grief and the loss. And I never ever thought I could hurt so much. I didn't think there was ever a pain that deep um, to, and that I could survive it. But I'm here and I'm so grateful for all of you and so thankful that you are here and you're fighting the fight and you're offering services. Um, and I just want to make our, our destigmatize depression, destigmatize getting help and addictions. Um, when I first came home, there was some talk of, you know, the criminalization of addictions. Like, I thought that was absolutely absurd. Like, our people are hurting and they're masking, they're, they're hiding and self-medicating some of the worst pains and traumas that human beings should ever experience. And I'm so glad that's being brought out by the state that, you know, no, we need to decriminalize this and get help for our people because they are our loved ones, they are relatives. So, thank you. <laughs>